Today, what I want to talk about is three reasons why you should definitely buy used wheelchair transportation as opposed to financing a new vehicle when you are first starting out in the non-emergency medical transportation business. What's good, family? It's your man, Mr. Vincent M. Nash. Welcome to my channel. All I talk about is entrepreneurship. I love talking about real estate. I love motivating people. I love encouraging people. That's what I'm all about. That's what we do. If you like that, please subscribe to my channel. Please like the content. Please join my community. So let's get it on. If you have been following my channel, if you have watched any number of my videos, then you know my passion now resides within the realm of real estate. I have slowly built up my real estate portfolio and I actually do not do, is that a double name? I don't participate any longer in non-emergency medical transportation, wheelchair transportation. However, it is very clear from the number of views in my videos and the comments that I have a lot of people who are interested in that. In fact, I had a guy leave a comment. He was like, hey, get back to wheelchair transportation talk. So I was like, okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you three reasons why you should definitely buy a used wheelchair transportation vehicle as opposed to financing a new one. And I'm going to tie it into the term controlled growth, which is a concept that can be used in any area throughout uh, any of your specialties, genres, uh, entrepreneurial ventures, I'm gonna tie it into the concept of controlled growth, okay? I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, but I'm going to give you three reasons why you should buy a used wheelchair vehicle instead of financing a new one. The first reason is that they are simply too damn high. The price of a new wheelchair vehicle is too high versus buying a used one. You can get a used wheelchair vehicle off of Craigslist. Now they have Facebook Marketplace, but you can find a used wheelchair vehicle in between four to $6,000, okay? Four to $6,000. Now, the nature of these vehicles because you are not the first person to use them, hence they are used, they were used as wheelchair transportation vehicles. So they are going to have high mileage, okay? So basically you are either in a position where you can get a used wheelchair vehicle, which may have 100 to 200,000 miles on it for four to $6,000 versus a new to fairly new zero to 50,000 uh, mile vehicle where they're going to charge you 30 to $40,000. That's a huge difference. Four to $6,000 versus 30 to $40,000. But that is the variance when you're talking about a used wheelchair vehicle versus a new wheelchair vehicle. They're gonna bank you for a new one. In my experience, okay, I get a hold of a used wheelchair transportation vehicle. As long as the body is in shape, as long as the interiors, the axle, um, those types of things are in shape, I can continue to give it a motor, give it a life, and 
believe it or not, I have had vehicles where I put three, four, maybe even five motors in that vehicle. When the motor goes out, I'm faced with, I can A, finance a new vehicle, which I never did for 30 to 40. B, go out and get a used one for four to seven. C, put a new motor in for three to four. A lot of times I went with option C and we kept rolling. Those vehicles actually maintained themselves for quite a long time. And since you're in the business of running these vehicles and hopefully you running them. When I started, I prayed to God. I said, please let me run these vehicles from day to night. And voila, that's what happened. So I would get a couple years out of that motor until I had to put a new motor in. And here's the deal. I want to put a caveat. When you're starting, you need to get with a mechanic that you trust. Don't jump, 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 jump. Because if you're doing business like I'm doing business, there's always something. The deal is get with somebody that you trust, that works with you, gets through these uh, maintenance issues, and just ride it out. So the price of a new one at thirty to forty thousand versus me buying a used one for four to six thousand was too much of a variance. That's the reason number one why you should buy a used one versus a new one. The second reason why you should buy a used vehicle versus financing a new one is because the industry is too volatile. The industry is too volatile. And what I mean by that, you are working through a Medicaid broker. If you look through my other videos, you'll understand. You're working through a Medicaid broker. You don't really work for yourself. You work for the government. Hence the reason why I'm always pom-poms, cheering on, get into real estate, because you work for the government. And because of that, you don't have complete control over your destiny. A lot of times the government works through Medicaid brokers. These Medicaid brokers, because they're working with what they have, which is a sh shortage of a budget in the first place, because it's backed by the government, which have certain rates. It's a whole structure, but it'll change. It can change from MTM then it'll be logistic care. Then it'll be VO. Each one of those have the right to take away your clients if you need be. So you don't really have complete control. You can have 100 clients today. Then you could have 50 clients tomorrow. So you went out and financed new vehicles to service 100 clients today. And then tomorrow you lost half. Or let me give you another example. Take the pandemic take the pandemic. The pandemic slashed my business in half. Day programs cut down, medical appointments cut down. Imagine if I had gone out, financed, because now you owe that debt. They don't care anything about the pandemic. They don't care anything about the Medicaid broker changing. You signed a contract to pay a monthly fee for these vehicles you finance, and you will have to pay that fee regardless. Even if the situation or scenario changes, which is what I'm talking about, it's too volatile. In my county, they just changed. First, they changed from logistic care to MTM. Then they changed from MTM to VO. Any one of them can come in and make you accept a lower rate or whatever rate, they can take away those clients, they can play with those clients. You can have a contract with a group home, that group home could take that contract away, that group home could shut down. You don't wanna finance vehicles based on an industry that's too volatile, that you don't have control over your destiny. That's a bill that you will have to pay 
If I had gone out and financed 20 vehicles for all the clients I had pre-pandemic and I only needed five, I would still owe a bill for 20 vehicles. So reason number one, the price is too damn high for a new vehicle. Number two, the industry is too volatile. And number three, which leads into my overall concept, you just don't need it. There is a concept that I always have lived by called controlled growth. Don't grow. Don't go do things more over and beyond than what you need. So in the concept of non-emergency medical transportation, I started out with myself and one vehicle. When I reached, I'd say about every 10 new clients, you're going to need a new vehicle and a new person to drive that vehicle. Now with that comes new expenses, new payroll, workers comp, maintenance, gas. So I would only grow when I needed to. Controlled growth. I went from one vehicle. When I got over 10 clients and I got stressed out, I went to two vehicles. I went to three vehicles and I did them all by going and getting used vehicles off of Craigslist. I controlled my growth. I didn't go out and do more than you need to do. And you can use that within any genre. So for instance, take real estate. I didn't just go out and buy a property management company and I only had a few properties. I, along with uh, my cousin and my son, we do our own property management. So we can control that cost. So we can control that growth. Anything that you are doing in your particular field, you don't have to just go out, buy things and just, you know, let's say, oh, I'm going to go out and get an office. Start with a home office. That's what I did. I started with a home office. I grew out of that home office and I went and rented an office. After I got to a certain point, I went out and bought an office. In time, you will be given the signals needed that it is time to grow, that it is time to acquire. You don't have to do more than what you need to do. Controlled growth. Be patient, take your time, allow the circumstances to dictate to you the moves that you need to make. Because this thing that we're in is a chess game and you have to be very calculated with the moves that you make. You don't want to do things prematurely and you don't want to be too reactive. So you have to be very observant and you have to allow yourself to grow at the pace that you were meant to grow. All right? So, one, the price is too damn high. It's too volatile. Okay? And three, you just don't need it. Control your growth. Your man, Vincent M. Nash. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel. Please like my content. Check out what I'm talking about. I hope you have a blessed day. And uh, I'll holler at you next time.